Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Clément Bonnereau. My guest today is Sudhir Hazarising. He's a professor of politics at the University of Oxford and an expert in French political thought and French history. Um, he's the author of How the French Think, an affectionate portrait of an intellectual uh, people, which was published in France in 2015 under the title Subi Kiem Les Idées, this country that loves ideas. Sudhir Hazari Singh, thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we talk about your book, I'd like to talk about the uh, column that you wrote in Le Monde um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, just after the first presidential debate, which was organized between the five uh, leading candidates. Um, you say that traditional party lines are blurred and that the debate now is between, it seems, uh, forward thinking reformists and backward thinking conservatives. What do you mean by that? Well, that distinction is one that Emmanuel Macron makes, and I think he's really on to something there, because what uh, he talks about in his book Révolution and what we're finding um, in terms of the different uh, relationships among the different parties is that the old division between left and right is, is imploding. So, for example, the different parties of the left are no longer able to form a clear alliance uh, uh, with each other. And the same thing is happening on the right. The right is uh, really fractured between uh, a moderate Republican right on the one hand and uh, a far right on the other, a nationalist right. And so what uh, is emerging as a clearer um, cleavage is the difference between those on the one hand who want... Uh, a more integrated France, a France that is more connected with globalization, uh, a more optimistic France too, because I think all of those things form uh, a, a coherent ensemble in terms of um, uh, clusters of ideas and attitudes. And on the other hand, um, those who are worried by uh, globalization and its impact on France, those who are worried about identity uh, and national identity, And they are the ones who are advocating in different ways for a more closed France, a France which, uh, in a sense, put, puts up barriers to the outside world. But is it really as binary as you say? I mean, you've got François Fillon, for instance, who's conservative on social issues, who's very, um, very scared of immigration, of France losing its identity. And yet at the same time, he's uh, very neoliberal in terms of, of, of economic policies. Um, so is it really that simple? Um, I think that's a very interesting point, because um, what you're seeing, it's absolutely true that Fillon is trying to hold these two rather contradictory ideas together. But if you see his rhetoric, his campaign rhetoric, and the sorts of things he talks about, um, he's being much more pulled towards the identity politics um, side of the spectrum. And so because that's what he feels, I think quite rightly, to be the more powerful element in the equation. What his voters want to hear about primarily are how to deal with the kind of identity issues that the right, and particularly the far right, uh, has made uh, its principal campaign themes. Mm -hmm. And you see the same um, phenomenon on the left. There's a kind of radicalization of the Socialist mm -hmm. Party, which led to the choice of Amon rather than Manuel Valls as the socialist candidate. Mm -hmm. And indeed, Amon himself is being pulled, found himself from the moment he was chosen as the socialist candidate, being pulled further to the left. So you have a phenomenon of radicalization, I think, on both sides of the spectrum. You also say there's a phenomenon of of individualism um, in the sense that we're focusing more on individuals than political parties, it seems. Um, is it the end of party politics in, in France, do you think? Well, parties, I think, have been declining. Major parties have been declining for quite some time. So we should view the 2017 presidential elections in some historical perspective. I think really from the end of the 20th century, we've seen these large presidential parties, share of the vote, shrink uh, further and further. And now we've really come to quite a crux, because I think it's very likely after the 2017 elections that both, the two, both of the two parties of government, if you want to call them that, are going to implode. Um, and, you, and you will see, especially if uh, Emmanuel Macron is elected to the presidency, uh, uh, breakaway, breakaway groups uh, emerging um, and coalescing in, in, in new patterns mm -hmm. um, on the centre, the centre-right and the centre-left. So, so you will have, as, as you 
as you say, um, two, two groups, two um, opposing groups, really, one that is embracing globalization and one that is very much against globalization and more in favor of, of nationalism and going back to an old model, perhaps. Although the, the anti-globalization groups are not united, um, and that's one of the advantages of, of, the, of, the, of people like Macron at the moment, which is that um, even though uh, Marine Le Pen and Jean-Luc Mélenchon have, in some respects, um, uh, a similar rhetoric when it comes to the outside world, they absolutely do not agree on, on the recipes. You just mentioned Marine Le Pen and Jean-Luc Mélenchon, and they're both um, what we refer to as populists. But you also describe uh, Macron as a centrist populist. I find that concept quite interesting. Well, I think this is what France is always the land of innovation and creativity. And I think Macron has given us the first centrist populist because he uses the language of populism very, very clearly and very, very deliberately. He's anti establishment. Uh, he believes that the cleavage, the traditional cleavage between left and right, uh, is in the process of disappearing. Um, he's very anti-party. You'll notice that uh, his En Marche uh, organization is called a movement, mm -hmm. not a party. Not party. So in those three fundamental respects, he, he adopts the populist language. Um, and he also is a populist in the sense that he doesn't really like very much to have any intermediaries between... Uh, himself and the people. Two years ago, everyone thought this would be a battle between Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande 2012 all over again. Um, three or four months ago, everyone thought that Alain Juppé, the mayor of Bordeaux, uh, would be the president, but he was defeated in the primaries by uh, François Fillon. Then François Fillon was the favorite and he was engulfed in corruption scandals. There's really a feeling that this election was difficult to, is, is still difficult to predict. It's extremely volatile. And the one thing that I think all the Macron supporters should be very worried about is that his vote is the softest of all the leading candidates. Um, I think 80% of Marine Le Pen's voters say they will definitely vote for her. 70% um, roughly, of François Fillon's voters say they will definitely vote for him. For Macron, I think the latest figures I saw are something around 60%. I mean, that's a lot. So, and we still have you know, more than three weeks uh, of this campaign. So quite a lot can happen between now and, and the premier tour. You, you say in your book that um, French people are very political, very politically minded, uh, and yet it seems that um, um, recent polls suggest that up to 40, 45% of people could abstain uh, from voting in this election. Um, 10 million people watched the first presidential debate, but there's a sort of a lack of interest in a sense uh, and a frustration that's really growing around all those uh, corruption scandals. And I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about the corruption scandals um, for, for a few, um, for, 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 for some time. Um, um, do you think that it's, it's, it's part of, of uh, France's political culture to have so many corruption scandals? Um, I don't think it's necessarily part of France's political culture, but I think what it represents is uh, a lack of regulation um, in certain important areas. I mean, if we go back, say, 20, 25 years, the big scandals were scandals about party financing. I mean, the scandal, the big scandals of the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s, in fact, which swept, among other people, Alain Juppé, uh, 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 in, 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 the, in the melee were scandals about basically taking public money and uh, transferring it into party coffers. Mm -hmm. The French have cleaned up their act completely, uh, almost completely in that mm -hmm. respect. So you no longer have this uh, a situation where people come with big bags of, full of cash and hand them over to, to party officials. Sude has a reason. Unfortunately, we're nearing the end of our, of our interview. Um, I'd like to um, end with uh, one final question, perhaps. Um, do you think that uh, Marine Le Pen can win? Do you think that it's France's turn after Trump's victory in the United States and the, uh, Britain's decision to leave the EU? Do you think it's France's turn to, uh, to now uh, elect uh, a, po a populist president? A populist leader. Well, she she hopes so. Um, I mean, I think it's still it's still going to be very difficult for her because she doesn't have an ally, and so uh, you need uh, allies on the second round. Um, people are still very suspicious of the Front National. A majority of French people still think it's not a party like other parties. Um, she doesn't really have a lot of very experienced people around her. Um, but um, I think you know all she needs to do is get it right 
on one night. And so in that sense, you know, if she can run the table in the way uh, Donald Trump did, then she might pull it off. And I think the other big issue there will be the level of abstention. If abstention is high, if a lot of people stay away, um, her, her electorate is much more loyal and mobilized than the electorate of uh, whoever she will face on the second round, which will necessarily be a, a heterogeneous composite uh, uh, electorate. So it's possible, but I would say and hope not likely. Unlikely. Sidia Hazari Singh, thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, now, for more um, international uh, news and extended coverage of uh, the French presidential election, please don't forget to go uh, to our website at france24.com. Uh, coming up, more international news. Thanks for watching.